Hello, my name is Tony Schonk. I'm an amateur astronomer, a member of the Royal Astronomical Society Halifax chapter, and an instructor in the Seniors College of Nova Scotia. This is the first of a series of videos that I'll be doing where we examine telescope equipment. The reason I'm doing this video is because when I taught this course before, there were several people who were interested in the actual telescope equipment, how to buy it and how to use it. So I'm creating a series of, uh, let's say, 15 minute videos that people can watch after the class is over or on the internet once it's been loaded up there, uh, if they're interested in the technology of telescopes. Down here we have the tripod, then we have the mount, and then we have the optical tube assembly, or telescope, plus all the accessories that may go with it. Now, like any system, it's important that all components work well before you're going to be able to do good observing, or astral imaging, if you're interested in that. So, what we're going to do is talk about how to make sure that you have these components that are solid and work together. There are three important aspects to consider when looking at a tripod. The first is how sturdy is it? That is, when you actually use the telescope, does it jiggle? Does it vibrate? How long does it take to resettle down? If you're using it for observing, then it's okay if it jiggles a little bit, but if you're using it for imaging, you don't want it to jiggle at all. And you will need a much sturdier tripod. Now, when we talk about sturdiness, there are several factors that contribute to that. The first is that the components that you use to lock it in place have to be sturdy. And those, these are the screws that uh, screw in the legs, the extending part of the legs, and this component up here, which spreads the legs and locks them in place. Now, when you think you have it sturdy, the only way to test it is to actually jiggle this, jiggle the telescope. And as you can see in this case, nothing is moving. That means the tripod is sturdy, but in this case also it means the mount is sturdy. The second thing to consider is how well these components will hold up when you're using them in the field. And third, well, when you purchase the tripod and the mount together, they're always going to work together. But if you decide you want to put another kind of mount on the tripod, then you have to consider the fact that not all mounts work with all tripods. People who decide they want to buy a telescope often purchase the lowest priced telescope that they feel that they can afford that might be good, suitable for them. Um, and so I have two examples of tripods that tend to come with these kind of systems and each of them has their flaws. This one here uh, is made of aluminum and uh, it often comes with a very small mount and it is suitable for small telescopes and or a camera if you want to put that on it. However, the problem with it is that the locking mechanisms in the legs are made of plastic and you can see how I've had to jury-rig my own system here to hold them in place because the plastic broke. And uh, otherwise, this is made of metal and it's good, reasonably solid. So the problem with this is it's not very robust once you take it into the field. As you tighten up the screws, there's a very good chance that they may break. This second tripod uh, comes with a telescope, a mount, uh, and the whole system costs around $300. Well, um, this one, you can see here that, again, it's made of plastic here, and when you tighten these screws, there's a good chance you might break it. As I did, I had to replace it with a metal one, and also the plastic in the middle broke as well, so I had to jury-rig a system for holding the legs apart at the right point. This is a third tripod, and the advantage of this one is, even though it's relatively light, it doesn't use screws to lock in the legs. It uses a tripod system, like that, 
and so therefore it's not subject to breaking and this is a metal component and uh, even though it's relatively thin uh, it's a relatively robust tripod. If you're thinking of buying a larger telescope and a larger mount then you really have to start thinking about legs that are much thicker and a system and components that are much more robust. These two examples here are good examples of robust tripods. You can see that this is an inch and a half and these are two inches thick. All the components are made of metal and uh, there's very little vibration that will occur if you use a tripod like this. Another whole class of tripods and mount combinations are called tabletop telescopes. And here's an example of one. And you can see it has just a tripod legs down here and a relatively small mount. It also has a relatively small telescope because you don't want to, on a tabletop, have a large heavy telescope and system. Now, the advantage of this is that it all comes together in a package like this. It's easy to transport, easy to set up. And if you're out RVing, you can set it up on a picnic table and uh, everyone can enjoy looking through it. The weakness of these systems is that they're very much dependent on the sturdiness of the table upon which they're put. And, of course, you can't have very large telescopes to go with them. And they tend to come with relatively small uh, mounts. But, having said that, it's not a bad idea uh, something you can take in the car and set up and everyone can use. And what most people don't realize is that there's a screw down here which exposes a 3 8 inch uh, screw hole and you, if you have a very sturdy mount such as this Manfrotto tripod then you can screw this tripod into the bottom here and you have a mount, a tripod and a screw telescope system.